All right, so today we're taking a deep dive into a pretty hot debate in the developer world. Go versus PHP. Ah, it's a classic matchup. And I'm betting that a lot of you out there are already using one or both of these languages every day. Most likely, yeah. So we're not going to spend time on the super basic stuff. Right. We're going deeper. Exactly. We're looking for those subtle differences. The stuff that might make you rethink how you see these languages. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, at first glance, they might seem pretty similar. Well, they often get used for similar tasks. True, but they have some radically different approaches under the hood. Oh, yeah. So we've got Go. The up-and-comer. Known for its speed. Yeah, and efficiency. Going head-to-head -head with PHP, the, uh, what would you call it? Uh, I guess the veteran of web development Definitely. with a massive community and uh, an ecosystem that's, you know, really well established. Absolutely. To break this down, we're going to look at several key areas. Okay. Syntax and structure, obviously. Well, sure. Performance, got to see which one is faster. A big question, yeah. Concurrency and scaling. How they handle those big projects. Exactly. And even how they approach error handling. That can make or break a project. No kidding. So let's jump right in. All right, let's do it. Syntax. Every developer has an opinion on this. Oh, yeah. It's like, what, the first thing you notice about a language? Pretty much. So Go is often praised for its clean syntax, right? Yeah. Concise, readable. People even say it's almost Pythonic. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, hold on. For those of us who haven't, you know, lived and breathed Python, what does Pythonic even mean when we're talking about code? Well, it basically means that the code is really straightforward, easy to read, not a lot of unnecessary complexity. Okay, so like elegant and simple. Yeah, exactly. Think of it like um, writing a really clear email mm -hmm. versus like a super dense legal document. Okay, I see the difference. Both get the job done, but one is a lot easier on the eyes. So Go is aiming for that, uh, that elegant email style. Yeah, you could say that. It values simplicity. Okay, so how does that compare to PHP's syntax? Well, PHP gives you a lot more... Uh, freedom. It's flexible. Which can be good or bad, I guess. It is a double-edged sword. Right. Because while it lets you code in different styles, it can also lead to, uh, well, inconsistency, especially when you have a bunch of developers working on the same project. I can see that being a problem. Yeah. It's like if you're building a house, having some flexibility is great. Sure. But you need some kind of shared blueprint or else the whole thing might fall apart. So Go's strictness is like that blueprint keeping things organized. Pretty much. And this difference in philosophy, you know, how they approach structure, it really shows up when you start looking at performance. Okay, let's talk speed. So Go is a compiled language, right? Yeah. So that gives it a speed advantage right out of the gate. Yeah, because the code gets transformed directly into those machine instructions. No middleman. Makes it super efficient. Very efficient. But PHP has been around forever. That's true. Powering a ton of websites. A huge chunk of the internet. So it can't be that slow. You're right. Well, you're right. PHP has come a long way, and it's gotten a lot faster over the years. Okay. But because it's interpreted, there's this extra step every time you run the code. Ah, uh, I see. Like, you know, imagine having to translate a document every time you want to read it. Instead of just having it in your native language already. Exactly. So Go is like reading in your native language. Gotcha. So if I need pure speed, Go is probably the winner. Got that edge, yeah. I made. but what about handling tons of data, like massive amounts of user interactions all happening at the same time. How do they stack up when it comes to concurrency and scaling? That is where things get really interesting. Because you see, Go was designed with concurrency in mind from the very beginning. Okay. And it has these built-in tools called Go routines and channels. Okay, break that down for me. Well, think of Go routines like uh, lightweight threads. Lightweight threads, okay. They let you execute a bunch of tasks concurrently at the same time without bogging down your system. Gotcha. It's like having a team of super efficient code ninjas, each one tackling a different task independently. Okay, I like that analogy. But how do they coordinate? I mean, you don't want them tripping over each other. Right, and that's where channels come in. Okay, channels. They're like communication pipelines between those go routines so they can share data smoothly. So they can work together without messing things up. Exactly, oh. which makes it um, surprisingly elegant to build systems that can handle a ton of traffic. So you're saying I could build like a real-time chat app yeah, or a super high-frequency trading platform and Go wouldn't even break a sweat. It's definitely built for that kind of thing, yeah. Wow. 
So PHP would struggle with that. Well, it relies more on traditional threading. Which can get messy. Yeah, resource intensive, mm -hmm. especially when you're trying to scale things up really big. Okay, so Go has a clear advantage there. But there's another big difference between these languages. And I think it trips up a lot of developers. Static versus dynamic typing. Ah, yeah. Go is super strict, statically yeah. typed. Well, PHP is dynamic. What does that actually mean for us? when we're writing code. Well, static typing, it's like having a very meticulous editor who proofreads your code before you publish it. Okay. With Go, you have to define the type of every variable up front. Which can feel a little, you know, annoying at first. Yeah, a bit restrictive. Right. But it catches potential errors really early on during compilation. So less chance of nasty surprises later. Exactly. It makes your code much more robust, more predictable, especially in those large, complex projects where you know, reliability is critical. Yeah, so it forces you to be more disciplined, which can be a good thing. Absolutely. Okay, what about PHP? Well, PHP is more, uh, it's like hitting that publish button and hoping for the best. Oh, no. It figures out the types of variables as the code runs, which can be more flexible, faster for prototyping. Sure. But it also means that errors might only pop up later. That's scary. Yeah, and those unexpected crashes, bugs, they can be a real headache. It's like the classic trade-off, right? It is. Safety and predictability versus speed and flexibility. Yeah, choose your battles. And that decision often depends on the project, the team, and what you prioritize. Exactly. Why? Right. And speaking of things that can go wrong, let's move on to our final topic for this part of the deep dive. Error handling. All right. Everyone's favorite. Because, let's face it, errors happen, no matter how good you are. They're inevitable. So how do Go and PHP help us you know, deal with those errors gracefully. Well, Go takes this very explicit approach. Explicit, okay. It uses a special type called error. Error, got it. And it often returns multiple values from functions. Multiple values. One of which might be an error. Interesting. So you're forced to think about what could go wrong. Proactively. Yeah, and handle those potential errors in your code directly. So it's like Go's always there, tapping you on the shoulder, uh -huh. saying, hey, this could mess up. What's your backup plan? Pretty much. It's making you think ahead. Exactly. And even though it might feel like a bit of extra work at first, this explicitness, it leads to much more resilient code in the long run. You're less likely to be surprised by those weird errors. Exactly. Because you've already thought about how to handle them. Okay, so Go is all about hope for the best, prepare for the worst. You could say that, yeah. So what about PHP? How does it handle errors? PHP, it relies more on exceptions. Exceptions, okay. Which can be more flexible. Sure. But also potentially less consistent. Less consistent, how so? Well, with exceptions, it's more up to the individual developer to decide how to deal with them. So different developers might do things differently. Right, which can lead to variations in error handling practices. Okay, I can see how that could be a problem. Yeah, it can make it harder to maintain a large code base. Especially if you're working on a team. Exactly. So it's like PHP gives you the tools to build your own safety net. But you better use them, right? You have to be really diligent about implementing robust error handling yourself. This all goes back to that core difference in philosophy, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. Go is strict, explicit, wants to prevent errors from happening in the first place. Wants that reliable code. While PHP gives you more freedom, but also more responsibility. It's more of a choose your own adventure kind of thing. So we've covered a lot of ground in this first part of our deep dive. We have syntax, performance, concurrency, type systems, and error handling. It's a lot to process. But it's clear that Go and PHP have some very different approaches. Oh, absolutely. Each with its own strengths and weaknesses. That's the beauty of it. But before we jump to any conclusions, there's one more crucial aspect to consider. The community and ecosystem surrounding each language. Yes, because the language is more than just its features. It's the people who use it. The tools they build. The shared knowledge that they create. The whole culture around Exactly. So join us in part two. We're going to explore those mm -hmm. vibrant communities and the resources that make Go and PHP such powerful forces in the world of software development. It's going to be interesting. I'm excited to dive into that. Me too. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Pragmatic Reviews for more deep dives into the tech world. We'll see you in part two. See you there. Welcome back. All right, so we're back for part two of our Go versus PHP deep dive. And last time, 
we dug into some of the uh, the core features, you know, the nitty gritty. The technical stuff. Yeah, exactly. But now I think it's time to like zoom out a bit. Okay. Look at the bigger picture. The communities, the yeah. ecosystems. Right. Because a language is more than just its, uh, you know, its syntax or its sure, performance the, benchmarks. It's the people. Yeah. The tools. The shared knowledge. Right. It's that whole culture that surrounds a language. It's like comparing two cities. If that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Each one has its own vibe, its landmarks. It's hidden gems. <laughs> exactly. So when we look at PHP, it's been around forever. Decades. So it's got this really well-established feel. Yeah, very mature. Like a bustling metropolis. And that's seen it all. For sure. And that's reflected in its ecosystem. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you've got frameworks like Laravel, Symfony, right? Which have become like industry standards for web development. Right. And then there's, of course, WordPress. Powering what? Like a third of the internet? Something crazy like that. Yeah. So from a developer's perspective, that means you're not starting from scratch. You've got all these pre-built components. Tons of libraries. A huge community to turn to for help. And, you know, pretty big job market too. Oh yeah. Tons of opportunities. But what's interesting to me is that Go, even though it's newer, right? Much newer. It's managed to cultivate this like really passionate community. Very active. It's almost like a, uh, what would you call it? Like a thriving tech hub. Yeah, buzzing with all this energy. And I've heard that the Go community is super welcoming. Oh yeah, very friendly. Especially to you know, people who are just starting out. There's a real emphasis on collaboration, sharing knowledge. Yeah, it's not like a, you know, a super competitive cutthroat environment. No, not at all. More like everyone's in it together. So Go's ecosystem might not be as massive as PHP's, not yet. It's still growing. But it's growing fast. Very rapidly. And it's not just about, you know, how many libraries there are. No, it's the quality. Right, the design. The thoughtfulness behind those tools. And I think a good example of that is, uh, well, projects like Docker and Kubernetes. Both written in Go. And they've become essential, right? Right. for modern software development. For sure, cloud native everything these days. Exactly. And I think that really highlights like Go's power, its ability to handle these, you know, really complex large scale systems. It's definitely a force to be reckoned with. So we've got PHP with its long history. It's massive ecosystem. Proven track record. Safe bet. And then we've got Go with its energy. Focus on quality. A community that's really passionate about the language. So it's a really interesting contrast. It is. And it begs the question, is PHP's, like, dominance, is it fading? Is Go the future? Ooh, tough question. What do you think? I mean, it's tempting to, you know, try to pick a winner. I know, right. But I think it's more nuanced than that. I think so, too. Both languages have their place. Their strengths. And the best choice really depends on, you know, the specifics. Of the project, the team, yeah. Exactly. If you're building a web app and you need something that's super reliable, has a ton of support, a huge pool of developers, PHP is a great choice. It's a safe bet. Yeah. But if you're prioritizing speed, concurrency, more, I guess, modern approach, Go is definitely worth considering. Yeah. But here's what I'm wondering. Does it have to be either? That's an interesting thought. Could we see a future where Go and PHP actually like work together? Leveraging each other's strengths? Right. We see that with other languages, right? Right. Where they coexist. Yeah, they can collaborate within the same project. So imagine like a web application where Go is handling all the, you know, the heavy lifting on the back end. Processing data. Managing all those concurrent connections. With its fancy goratines. Right. While PHP is, you know, taking care of the front end, using all its uh, well-established web frameworks. Creating a smooth user experience. It's like each language is doing what it does best. Exactly. And I think that highlights a really important point. The evolution of programming languages, it doesn't always have to be about, you know, one replacing the other. No, it's not a zero-sum game. Right. It can be about finding ways for them to work together to create something even better. That's the exciting part, the possibilities. So as developers, we need to be open to that, right? Experiment. Explore different tools. See how they can complement each other. Because the more we learn, the better equipped we'll be to make the right choices for our projects. Well said. Mm -hmm. So we've covered a lot in this part of our deep dive. Communities, ecosystems, the bigger picture. And it's clear that both Go and PHP have, you know, really vibrant communities. Yeah, active. They contribute so much to their... 
uh, ongoing development and success. They keep those languages evolving. And while there might not be a clear winner in this whole, you know, Go versus PHP debate, hopefully we've given you some insights into, you know, the strengths of each language, their communities, and you know, maybe even spark some ideas for your next project. That's what we're here for. Before we jump into our final thoughts, though, don't forget to subscribe to Pragmatic Reviews. And give this video a like if you're enjoying our deep dive. We really appreciate your support. Now let's wrap things up in part three, where we'll share some final insights from this epic Go versus PHP showdown. See you there. Welcome back to the deep dive, everyone. We've spent the last two parts really dissecting Go and PHP. We've looked at it all, their syntax, how they perform, how they deal with all those, you know, concurrency challenges. The communities too. And by now, I'm sure you've got your own ideas about which one might be the best fit for, you know, your next big project. Yeah, I'm sure some of you have strong opinions already. But before we wrap up this whole Go versus PHP showdown, I think it's important to like step back for a second. And remember that picking the best language, well, it's not really about choosing a winner, is it? Nope. It's about picking the right tool for the job. Right. And that depends on what you're actually trying to build. It's like, you know, if you need to drive a screw, a hammer is not going to help you much. Exactly. It doesn't matter how much you love that hammer. And the same goes for programming languages. There's no magic bullet, no one-size-fits-all answer in this you know, Go versus PHP debate. You got to consider what the project actually needs. Right. The experience of the team, what they're comfortable with. Performance needs. Like how fast does it need to be? And even, you know, think about the future. How easy is it going to be to maintain this code base down the road? So let's do a quick recap of what we've learned. We've seen Go with all its speed, its built-in concurrency, strict typing. It's a great choice for building those high performance applications, you know, things that need to scale. Cloud computing, microservices, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's like, you know, a finely tuned engine built for handling those complex tasks really efficiently and precisely. But its syntax, it can feel a bit restrictive, at least at first. Yeah. Some people find it a bit too rigid, but that strictness, it really does pay off. Because it helps you write code that's reliable, easy to maintain especially when you're working on those big, complex projects. Now, on the flip side, we've got PHP. With its huge ecosystem. Mature frameworks. Tons of flexibility. And it's still a major player in web development. I mean, it's a language that's constantly evolving, right? Oh, yeah. It's been adapting to the needs of the web for decades now. So if you need a language that's been battle-tested, that has a huge community behind it, PHP is still a solid choice. For sure, especially if you're doing web development. But if you're looking for pure speed, concurrency, a more modern approach, Go might be the better fit. It's got that edge in those areas, yeah. But here's a thought. What if we move beyond this idea of, you know, having to pick one or the other? Yeah, what if? Could we imagine a world where Go and PHP actually work together? Combining their strengths. Right. I mean, we already see this with other languages where they coexist within the same project. It happens all the time. So picture this. You've got a web application. Go is powering the back end, doing all the heavy lifting, processing tons of data. Managing those concurrent connections, all those users hitting the site at the same time. Right. And then PHP is handling the front end, taking care of the user interface, making sure everything looks good and runs smoothly. Leveraging all those great PHP frameworks that are out there. It's like each language is playing to its strengths. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really important lesson here. The evolution of programming languages, it doesn't always have to be this, you know, battle to the death. Right. One language winning and the other one fading into obscurity. Sometimes it's about finding ways for them to cooperate. To build even better solutions together. So as developers, we need to stay open-minded. Experiment. Don't be afraid to try new things. Explore different languages, different tools. See how they fit together. Because the more we learn, the better equipped we'll be to, you know, build amazing things. And that's what it's all about, right? That's a great way to wrap things up. So we've really dug deep into the Go versus PHP debate. We've explored the pros and cons. The communities, the ecosystems. All the things. And hopefully you've come away with a better understanding of, you know, not just these two languages, but also like how to approach the whole idea of choosing the right tool for the job. Because that's a skill in itself. And remember, the world of technology is always changing. New languages are popping up all the time. New tools, new frameworks. It's an exciting time to be a developer. So stay curious, keep learning, and most importantly, 
have fun out there. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Pragmatic Reviews for more deep dives into the world of tech. We'll see you next time.